Hey CIV Podcast, welcome back to another episode. We're so glad that you're tuning in. Um, like we always say here, don't forget to check out the other episodes. Um, but today we're just going to jump right into it. Today we're here with a special guest. We're going to let you introduce yourself. So tell the people who's on who's on the couch today. <laughs> hey guys, uh, my name is Sancho Gelb, um, member of uh, CIV here. Um, yeah, and yeah, I've been a member here now for... Boy, I'm gonna date myself. These these guys, uh, I'm just gonna put it right out there for you guys. Just gonna expose I've been us called old by this group. <laughs> no, that's for not a true. while. Okay, not everybody in this group. All right, <laughs> let me just put that out there. But apparently, I'm a boomer. Mature. I'm it's not the actually word. a boomer. He's not I'm a millennial. Boomer. But no, I've been with uh, CIV now for boy about almost 20 years. Wow. Well, before it was Alder Grove Church, but wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, so why don't you um, tell us where you serve here at CIV and what got you doing that? Okay. Um, well, over the years, uh, I've been involved in a number of different areas. Currently involved in kind of, I guess, two main areas. Um, the journey class, so mm. ages kind of 10 to 12, 13. Uh, I guess, no, it's a little bit older than that. Yeah, 10 to 13. Um, is the class that I'm involved in teaching. Been doing that actually with your sister mm-hmm. and a couple other young young, uh, young adults here at the church for a few years now, and uh, really love. Um, obviously, there's a there's lots of challenges with that age range, um, but <laughs> also a lot of excitement and joy mm-hmm. from some of these kids um, as they're learning, you know, and exploring different things. And so I really actually do enjoy serving in that area. Um, it's it's the age before they become too cool to talk, which, <laughs> yeah, which is fun. That's true. <laughs> they still talk uh, a lot. Yeah, they just have to get out of their system very, very before. Much so, but uh, <laughs> but that's that's fun too, you know, that, yeah, that age range. So I really enjoy serving in there. And then um, also been serving as an elder here at the church for mm-hmm. uh, quite a number of years as well. Since before, most people would say I was old enough to be an elder. <laughs> that's why we call you boomer yeah it's just, you're, you're the one boomer. who's aging you're, yourself you're we're not even doing anything about I'm it i'm just, just putting it out there because i know you're gonna say it <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding but, <laughs> oh man you know, that's thanks funny. thanks ryan and uh and alex for having me on here um <laughs> well, of course i've I, I said earlier and i'm, I'm gonna say it because you'll see it as i go i'm i'm nervous to be on here you know i'm just gonna put it out there because because i am but that's no, okay. No, that's valid. I, you're not the only one, so I would totally get it. I'm. It's not an easy thing, but we appreciate it. And, yeah, thank you for being here and giving us your time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> Makes me feel younger hanging out with you guys. So. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> okay, cool. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, just by us being us. Well, if you guys – I don't know if you guys are watching this, if you guys are listening to this. Oh, but um, Sancho is wearing a really nice hoodie. <laughs> um, and it has a really cool logo on it. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? What do you do outside of church? Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the fun things that you get to do? Um, and I don't know how, did, or like, how did you find your way to doing that? <laughs> um, yeah. So you're referring to my, my, uh, BC helicopters hoodie. Yep. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, run a business called BC Helicopters, and we do flight training. So we teach people to fly there. Mm-hmm. Um, we do tours and go up in the mountains and you know play with. Like right now, we're playing in the snow. Lots of snow up in the mountains right now. Yeah. So lots of landings up there. Doing that that uh, is pretty awesome. It's hard to. Some days it's hard to call it work. Other days, every every job has those days where it's it's work too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, lots of fun. Been doing that. Um, Boy, about uh, 14 years, 24, yeah, 16 years now. Wow. And uh, yeah, I really love it. Um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I remember uh, last year we were at the CASA Senior Football Tournament and we were out in the fields in Abbotsford and we see like just a bunch of helicopters yeah. passing by. And then I just jokingly, <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe Sancho's up there. He's like, <laughs> and, then, and then Sancho comes down to the field like a couple hours later. And he's like, oh yeah, that was me. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. but, that's yeah, that's the girl, the girls fly to uh, event that happens every year in Abbotsford. That that's super of. cool. Yeah, cool. Well, we're here to talk about your faith journey. Mm-hmm. Um, so, twenty years at Church in the Valley, uh, sixteen <coughs> years at BC Helicopters. Uh, that is 
tons of experience mm. um and that you didn't age yourself i think <laughs> i think you I, I'm, I'm making this up you wise to yourself i wise <laughs> myself okay you i like the way you talk <laughs> right i like you better all the time <laughs> you just, talk, just talked about all of the experience that made you wiser so uh, why don't you lay down some of that wisdom um oh man how did you get to church in the valley yeah. um what are some of the things that brought you uh to the church i guess alder grove church to begin with but let's yeah let's go all the way back all yeah. the way back wow mm-hmm. okay um well i was thinking about this you know with the couple of the questions that you you guys typically ask and um just thinking about kind of my roots what me what brought me to the church in general and that kind of thing so um for those that don't know i was my family was from germany i was born in germany and uh, we immigrated to Canada when I was very young, like mm. uh, months old. Uh, we came across on the boat, <laughs> as they say. We actually did come on a, on a boat um, across to Canada. And my parents uh, wanted to just have have an adventure. They were this is back when when they were hippies, and uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> be honest, uh, they were on they were hippies, and they really wanted to explore. They didn't want to be uh, you know in the the typical German lifestyle mm-hmm. and so they wanted to kind of explore Canada it was kind of a wild west at the time and uh, so they came across and uh, settled in the Kootenays um, Kimberley I don't know if anyone is here is familiar with where Kimberley is it's like kind of eastern BC um, anyways a little Bavarian town I guess they had come previously to Canada and had met a couple there that had some kids in Kimberley and they ran a store and you needed to, in order to come to a Canada at the time, you had to be sponsored by somebody, which isn't too much different than now. Mm-hmm. Um, and they found this family there in Kimberley that was willing to sponsor them. Mm. And uh, so they, they came over uh, a couple of years later, I guess, after they had gotten some of the paperwork done. And um, this family took them in, gave them a place to live, kind of took care of them. Gave them, gave them work. My dad at the time was doing uh, like murals and artwork and stuff. And so because the town was Bavarian and he did Bavarian art, he was able to get work there, you know, painting, basically painting ta- the town red, if you want to <laughs> use that terminology. <laughs> and uh, anyways, long story short, the family that um, sponsored them was Adventist. So they came over. My dad grew up Catholic. My mom grew up um, pro- uh, Protestant. Um, I don't remember now what she was, but um, another another religion in Germany. And uh, so they came to Canada. They met this family um, after they'd been getting to know them for a while. Um, basically, friendship evangelism. This family invited them to a series of meetings. And uh, the the speaker at the end of this, the meetings asked if anybody wanted to give their lives to God. And they, they were like, yeah, we do. And mm-hmm. at the time, you know, they smoked, they drank, all these things. And the pastor was like, all right, um, you guys want to get baptized? Yeah. So they had some studies and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and during, during that process, they, um, you know, they kind of cold turkey quit everything. Mm. They're like, okay, well, let's do this thing. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so I can't remember exactly how old I was at the time, maybe a couple of years at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't remember that part too much. I hear that in stories. Mm-hmm. But uh, so then through that process, they, uh, they grew to... To know God as they do do now, and and uh, became Adventist, and so I guess in some ways I am first generation Adventist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I grew up most of my life, well, all of my life that I know of um, as Adventist, but uh, with you know that kind of that history of coming into the church that my parents had was uh, was kind of unique that I, mm-hmm. that I didn't you know realize at the time how how much that uh, maybe guided my faith journey a little bit but um having having that story and kind of growing up with that background was kind of i'm sure part of what uh, made me who i am today mm. um yeah so then anyways you know through growing up you you grow up in the church and uh you know for anyone who's grown up in the church they know that you go through the all the motions you do mm-hmm. the things you you know you do when you mm-hmm. grow up in church you sing the songs and everything and 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 i had a uh, I would say I had a, a really positive um, um, experience growing up in the church, a small church, small town, 
I grew up kind of the, the formative years of my life in hope. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, the whole whole time. It, it used to be a bit a bit of a bigger church. Now it's a little bit smaller. It's mm-hmm. kind of shrunk a bit. But, um, you know, with other young, young people my age as well and kind of grew up um, with youth in that church. And then... Uh, for the first number of years of my life, we, uh, as kids, we were homeschooled because we, we kind of were moving around a bit, and that's a whole other story I won't get into too much. We lived in a bus for a while. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. He said his parents were hippies. We, we were the, the first uh, um, people that, you know, converted buses to houses back before it was cool. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I watched those YouTube videos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, anyways, so then uh, homeschooled for the first few years because of that, and then ended up, when we moved to Hope, there was there was no school or anything there, but uh, there was enough youth in the church at that time that they decided to start a school at the camp. Mm. And so there was 12 of us, I think, uh, at the time, uh, between the church kids and some community kids that started to come to the school. So went went through kind of um, middle school uh, at the school out there and then going to high school. Um, there was no there was no grade 10 or 11 or 12 at that school. So mm-hmm. um Basically, the option at that point was uh, Hope Secondary School, which is the, the public school in Hope there, which my sister and I uh, went to. Um, side note, my brother, who's younger, five years younger, um, by the time he got to that age, he ended up going to Fraser Valley. So oh. uh, he drove every day up to Fraser Valley. And <laughs> from Hope? <laughs> from Hope, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was wow. crazy. That is quite the commute. But uh, anyways, yeah, so went to Hope Secondary School. And um, yeah, so that's where... I would say my my testing as a young person kind of came to a mm-hmm. a point where um, I had to start making some decisions, you know, which direction I was going to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say I, I made some positive choices. I made some negative choices uh, along that path. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, high school or public school uh, definitely has some advantages and it also has some major disadvantages of of uh, just kind of the influences and stuff that mm-hmm. you're exposed to in that. So um, probably made some choices that I would take back in a heartbeat if I could. But I think at the same time, no choice that you make, if you can learn from it, is a bad choice. Mm. Um, because it, it grows you in some ways. It teaches you something. Mm-hmm. And I think um, at that time, you know, some of the choices I made in grade 12 – um, leading up to graduation and everything, I think if I had stayed in that community and I had stayed in that, that social group, I would have gone a very different direction. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was, there was some reality checks that I faced uh, at that time that I realized I'm not, I'm definitely not on a path that is going to lead to, <laughs> to positive things. <laughs> Real, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so then uh, after grade 12, I, I decided kind of which direction I was going to go. I decided to go to school up north in northern BC um, in Dawson Creek. And I think I think making that, that choice to leave and go to a whole new, new, new community, new group of friends, new everything, um, really gave me a chance to reevaluate what was priority in my life. Mm. Um, and reset kind of, yeah, reset my my value system, I guess, at that point as well. Um, met some great people up there and finished school. I got my, my degree as an aircraft maintenance engineer. Um, and then at that point, I was kind of going to start my career. So I, I found a job in uh, Grand Prairie, Alberta. I know I'm, I'm kind of rambling here. No, but it's, it's all part it's of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's, I'm, it's part of I'm the ready. story. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm here for it. Um, got a job in Grand Prairie, Alberta and, uh, started working there kind of naive about, you know, I guess work and, and what, what would be asked of me and stuff like that as well. And had my first real, um, test of my faith, I guess, Hmm. uh, working there. Um, growing up Adventist, of course, you know, we, we grew up believing the the Sabbath Mm -hmm. we believe in, in, in resting on the Sabbath day. And so, at this job, I started working, not really thinking about the, the consequences of, uh, of Sabbath until uh, I got job, called away on a job that involved 
uh, getting the job started on Friday and working with another guy mm. and uh, got to the end of the day Friday. The job wasn't done yet. And then s- next day is Saturday. And I'm like, we're going to, he's going to want me to work with him tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I, I really struggled. I had a really hard time trying to decide what to do at yeah. that moment because to me it was a defining moment of if I if I just say now okay let's go to work tomorrow um, th- I've made that decision and that's the decision I've made for going forward you know mm-hmm. that's that's what will be expected of me and and it to some people that may not feel like a big thing but to me it was a, a really important decision I made in that moment mm-hmm. um, and it was not an easy decision because the next morning <laughs> we woke up because we were in a, staying in a little motel motel in town there. And the next morning when he asked or he said, okay, let's, let's go. And I was like, actually, um, I'm not going to be going to work today. And he's like, what do you mean? And so I explained a little bit to him and he did not understand at all because mm. he didn't, uh, no context, right? Yeah. No context at all. And so he left and I, I sat there and it was, it was the craziest, weirdest day I've, I've ever spent trying to figure out what to do and how I'm going to, what, how am I going to go forward with this, uh, this decision right now? Anyways, um, all that to say, the reason I s- said all that is because to me, that was, it was a really big defining moment in my spiritual walk mm-hmm. where I said, this is a line that, that I feel is important to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, just based on what I, how I understand things and everything. And um, actually, that I got fired three days later, <laughs> lost no. that job. And uh, he, you know, he, he kind of put, put it to me and said, you know what, you have a choice. You can either sign a contract saying that, you know, going forward, you'll work on Saturdays or, or I'm going to have to let you go. Mm-hmm. And there again, it was another, at that moment, a little bit of a hard choice, but not as hard because I'd already made the hard choice mm-hmm. a couple of days before, right? right. And... Um, Anyways, lost that job, which ended up meaning I came back down to the lower mainland and found work down here. Ended up meeting my wife, you know, going, who came from Saskatchewan to go to school here. Started going to CIV, and that's kind of what led me to where I am today. So do I, do I regret having to make that hard choice? Absolutely not. Mm. It, was, it was one small decision it feels like but Mm -hmm. it it really defined the direction that i was and in the stands the stance that i was able to take or willing to take in that moment Mm -hmm. um made it easier in the future to take other make other decisions Mm. that have brought me to where i am today which is just on a on a walk along the path Mm -hmm. (laughs) like like anybody else here Mm. is as well that's huge though Mm -hmm. like i i don't mean i mean i didn't i wasn't a aircraft <laughs> engineer <laughs> or whatever <laughs> but I, I definitely found myself in situations where i had to um make that same decision mm-hmm. um and sometimes i didn't uh, but you're right like it is a line that once you cross um people are like well why did you cross it that one time why can't you just do it again mm-hmm. um so it is it's a fine line <laughs> it is a fine line and you know, you did set your boundary and you put your foot down mm-hmm. um, and, and at the end of the day, you lost your job. But I feel like in the long run, like that was probably the best thing. And that probably was still God yeah. um, leading you to something greater. Absolutely. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Wow. And it's it's honestly, it's, you know, it's affected, you know, now with my now that I have my own business, I I can I just easily make that decision. My employees know that the you know we don't we're not open on saturdays if somebody calls for a really big big contract on saturdays they just know that it's not gonna it's not even a question mm-hmm. right? it's just everybody knows that understands that and mm-hmm. it's it's okay yeah it's okay sometimes not saying yes to everything is okay yeah and that's a difficult mm-hmm. battle to have too with internally i feel like like you said I, i've also had to go through that and the jobs that i used to work at they were run on Saturday like at the clinics and I remember they asked me and I've had the same thing and I was like this is it I'm gonna lose my job if I say no but I think like even what you said it's just to have like at least some sort of like okay well this is what I stand for going forward if you know as long as this they know this is what I believe in hopefully they recognize that okay 
and standing my ground and having that faith too like mm -hmm. thankfully i didn't lose my job they understood <laughs> and they knew never to call me on saturday yeah. um but i also like your story it sometimes it works out where you end up losing the job and when you're saying that i always think about like the saying because i used to have this fear of like rejection um but like rejection is redirection and then like you mm. now going back to like the lower mainland and then finding your wife mm -hmm. and like here you are starting your life and like seeing how that has flourished you know that's that's incredible so you yeah. never know where god's leading you when he closes one door and he's just yeah. gonna open another one just yeah. to yep yeah even even the whole like not even just with sabbath with the sabbath things but even when um when i because i went to public school too mm -hmm. I, I had to i did up until grade 10 and then i went to public school for 11 and 12 okay um even having to explain things like oh why well, i can't eat that pork <laughs> or why i can't eat that seafood i think the first time i had to do that kind of thing it was like it's like uh, <laughs> like uh, I, have, I have to explain this to you now like it's kind of weird it's kinda like yeah. uh, and and then when it would happen multiple times like oh here we go again i have to pull out this story right <laughs> but um and and it feels in that moment it feels easier just to like just to break the Sabbath and mm -hmm. just to go and eat, uh, <laughs> eat the whatever. eat the unclean food or whatever, <laughs> um, but it it speaks louder um, when you do explain yourself and uh, when you show that you are different because that's that's ultimately like what we're supposed to be right we're supposed to be that beacon God calls us like the light on the hill right mm -hmm. um, so we're we're meant to be different uh, so. Yeah, I think like I learned not to be so icky about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just like I don't know. It felt icky to me in in yeah. being like a seventeen year old in high school and right. having to explain why I can't eat this yeah. like specific dish or something. But yeah, I I feel like you instill those in yourself through your own experiences, um, and especially now that you have kids, mm -hmm. um, like <coughs> those values. Those we'll same we'll questions are coming up again now, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now Oliver, I have the the privilege of of teaching Oliver, um, and soon Amelie, I guess, <laughs> and maybe Ella if I'm still around. Um, <laughs> <Hopefully>. But, <laughs> um, yeah, he they're in those formative years now where they're they're making the same decisions as you, mm -hmm. um, and maybe they're not, um, in the same environment that you were in, mm -hmm. uh, but those questions are still like valid still valid questions. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess. How are you navigating being a parent oh, and running a business oh. and working at church? Um, like, how are you doing that? I'm glad I'm glad Shannon's not here because she might have a different story. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's uh, uh, boy. All I can say is I have a really amazing partner in this whole thing because mm. if it was just me. It would be a mess, like honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't often probably verbalize how much I appreciate everything that she does because, mm -hmm. you know, I come back from work and she's picked up the kids often already or she's already got food on the table and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So, you know, it's doing anything, any of this on my own would be impossible. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot. Um, but it's it's a ton of ton of joy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I love what I do at work. I love being involved at church, and I love having kids. Um, so, you know, any talk to any parent, and they say it's it's tiring, but uh, it's worth every every minute of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then just like you said, seeing seeing kids grow up and seeing them make choices, and and that you know, in some cases good choices in some cases uh you know not so positive choices and you're like eh, i get it i've been there you know i've seen that but mm -hmm. um yeah uh, doing it together good and and just um involving god in every step of the way is it's easier said than done honestly mm -hmm. it's easy to become self-reliant and just get busy and and you know think that you can do it all but um it's usually the times when you Unfortunately, it's the times I find that when you get slammed with something, then that's when you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. God is there and he wants to be part of this as well. And mm -hmm. he, <laughs> he just wants me to ask him for help. Um, so, yeah, I wish I could say I've got it all together and I've, I've, I've figured out how to do all this. But it's a journey, right? Mm -hmm. You know, as I'm sure you both 
are in the same way. It's there's times when you know things are you know your your walk with God is really strong, and um, you know then you, real, you realize one day that hey, I've it's been a it's been a minute since I've mm-hmm. I've opened my Bible, or it's been a minute since I've talked to God. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you you you're back on this on this uh, this journey. So it's I've definitely found that there's never a start and an end line. You never you've yeah. never reached a point where things are going always good or that mm-hmm. you're always on fire or that you always have it together. Um, mm. It's, and that's where I think the community of the church and having, you know, people that keep you accountable and, uh, you know, that remind you that, you know, there's, there's more to life than just being busy mm. um, is really important. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those checks and balances and, mm. and having, you know, and honestly our, we don't currently have a small group, um, but over the years, Shannon and I have been involved in a small group um, quite a bit, and those have been the times when I've felt um, closest to those around me and also closest to mm. God is when being involved in, in community and small groups. So yeah. I think mm. there's a lot of value in that, honestly. Mm. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that because like, doing all of these episodes too, um, when we talk about faith journeys, it's like you never reach like – the end point to your faith (laughs) journey it's always constant and it's always going to have the highs and the lows and Mm -hmm. like you said like sometimes you're like oh yeah maybe maybe i should crack open my bible or like even like the prayer life is such a difficult thing too like you know god is like you said he'll be there and he'll like slam in your face and be like hey i'm right here i just (laughs) need to ask for some help um but yeah i think that's also the beauty in it too it's like we can always come back you know to him and he'll He'll welcome us with open arms. Um, but, yeah, there's always times where, like, you're like, yeah, I got this. And you're, like, <laughs> have this fire ignited in you. And then some days you're like, oh, where's that fire? <laughs> but that's the real part about, like, this journey in walk Christianity, I feel, too. Yeah. There's never, like, like this constant. It's always like this. Yeah. All yeah. the time. So, yeah. yeah. Like, and we, like. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I was just going to say what you said, like community. I think when we have people yeah. come together with people mm-hmm. and we re- vulnerable areas that like we're all in this together. It's mm-hmm. not just, and it looks different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, I was just thinking of an analogy when you were talking about like the highs and lows. I don't remember who told me this, but we were, I was talking to somebody about Bitcoin. Oh, <laughs> um, what? And we were ta- <laughs> I don't remember who it was. No, real. Uh, okay. But we were talking about how like, Bitcoin started here. Okay, I don't know if you're watching this, but if you're watching this, <laughs> I'm, I'm holding it at a, at a level I don't know. Um, so Bitcoin started here, and then every like couple cycles, it it dips, and hey. then and then when it goes back up, it goes up higher than the where the peak was before, mm-hmm. right? And then there it goes through a cycle, and then it dips again, and then when it comes back up, it's like higher than it was before. Oh, interesting. Um, so like, the value of Bitcoin. <laughs> insane is is kind of like an analogy of our faith journeys right (laughs) (laughs) we never we're never the same but our value keeps increasing every time we Mm. go through a valley right yeah and i never i honestly never thought that i would be using (laughs) that analogy as you were explaining that it just clicked and it made so much sense to me honestly Um, i guess we need to invest in bitcoin (laughs) Bitcoin. (laughs) well if you had ten thousand bitcoin you would be Set. Set for yeah, real. <laughs> for real. So, <laughs> in, I'm just kidding. This is not a, a, <laughs> not big a Bitcoin advertisement, but but no, I yeah. get like, what you're saying. Yeah, the whole like um like going through a, a hardship mm-hmm. and then just yeah. coming out of it so much better Strong, than you were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the Christian journey. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and you know it is tough and like going being wearing all those different hats that you mm-hmm. wear like it can't be easy. Yeah. Um. But you probably deal with so many different people day on, day end um, Mm -hmm. at your business. Um, Probably, I don't know if you've had like some crazy experiences um, regarding that. But how do you think you navigate your faith when you're working um, with people not necessarily a part of the church every day? Hmm. What would you say is the key in making that balance between being a man of faith, but being also a businessman? That's an interesting question. I, th- I think about that sometimes because, um, you know, I hear people talk about how they are able to witness at their work. And and I'm always always cognizant about, you know, do I 
do I say something or do I not say something mm. with, you know, being, you know, in business like I am. And uh, I tend to err on the side of, of not specifically, you know, being preachy or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to err more on the side of just making sure that I, I run a business with integrity. Mm. And if, if I, my yes is a yes, then I make sure that that's the case and my no is a no. And I, I try and avoid um, being preachy. But the other, on the other hand, you know, I know sometimes maybe I err a little bit too, too far on the side of not, not saying something. And maybe there's, there's more opportunities than I, I recognize. Um, you know, I have, I have a mentor. You, all, you guys know Dennis Williams. Mm-hmm. And he is like, and I'm going to put this out there. He's the next guy you got to have on the podcast. Okay, so you got to convince him. All right. He got you on here now. All so right. You can't say <laughs> <laughs> Your I'm name gonna, has I'm been spoken. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put it to him too because I think he's the guy that you're looking for for someone that has wisdom. That guy can never come out of a conversation without feeling like I'm a wiser person <laughs> after talking to him. But he he's the like the ultimate example of somebody that seems to just talk to everybody he comes across with mm-hmm. and have some godly conversation with uh, you know at the mm. end of it and it never feels pushed or never feels like it's mm. it's forced or anything um and so he's he's somebody i want to become more like i want to mm. uh, you know be someone that can just meet people and just naturally it just comes up mm-hmm. um which is just not it's not my personality and i struggle with that but yeah, it's but it's I something i would love to be better at mm-hmm. um so that's that's my own personal challenge is to be more like Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's so true. I think I'm the same way too. It's like I think I'd much rather it be through my actions than me having to like we're like, oh like do you believe in God? Like mm-hmm. I can never do that and I don't think I would ever do that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's But some people just can do it naturally. Yeah, exactly. It just really comes naturally. And that's a gift. I feel like that's very much a gift because all right and something you learn over the years one hundred percent. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know that I have a great answer for you on that. That's a good answer. But it, it is it is something I think about, and it's something I would – it's a personal challenge that I, I would like to um, definitely get better at doing. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. I just need to talk to Dennis more. <laughs> you got to get him on this couch. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, now we have our <laughs> next guest. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, um, this is a question that we like to ask – very often, actually, <laughs> almost every episode. But um, the question for you I have next is, what would you tell your younger self knowing what you've gone through, everything? And obviously, like, you're still on this, like we said, faith journey is mm-hmm. never, there's never an end to it. There's never, you reached your high, like, you've the gold medal for, like, you know, Christianity. <laughs> um, but what would you tell your younger self and everything that come to wow. happen? Yeah. Um, it seems to be the hardest question. Yeah, every time, yeah, do yeah. real struggle <laughs> with this one? <laughs> it's um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure if I have a good answer, but I would I would definitely say, um, spend time trying to figure out who you are and what's important to you, mm. and then just live honestly according to that. Mm. Um, because as young people, th- and we all, we all know this as young people, the, the hardest thing to do is to buck the trend. The easiest thing is just to go with the flow. And, you know, I was there. I, I know exactly how it is. I went with the flow at the end until I, you know, started to have make those hard decisions. And I, mm-hmm. um, like I said, sometimes it just, you know, it forms your character, forms who you are, but yeah. at the same time, yeah, if you if you have an idea of who you are and who you want to be, and you can be honest with yourself about that, um, that would be my advice: is is try and figure that out sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually so real, but yeah. No, mm. but you said like every decision that we make, I think, r- whether it be a bad decision, I think it forms us to the people that we are, and mm-hmm. it's a matter of like recognizing what are we going to learn from this decision. Like, okay, I failed. I did this, but what can I learn from this going forward? Yeah. Hopefully, you don't make the, the, like the wrong decision again. And if you do, you know, pick yourself up. Yeah. Okay, what's next? But yeah. And that's the thing, you know. You listen to some people's stories um, that that went like super far off in in a direction, and you know, you hear their testimonies, and you're like, 
if that person can make that many decisions in mm -hmm. you know in, and end up way over there and still come back to and you know be sharing with me the way they are now then i know that god's not done with me yet mm. it's not done with any of us yet and um you know peop people often have um you know they they have these sad stories where maybe they have kids that you know go off in a totally different direction than what, what they hope for their life and um, you know they pray for them in day in and day out um, and you know we don't know what the end result's going to be but there's lots of stories too where those kids then one day just realize hey you know what after all i've done and everywhere i've been um, it's not where i want to be mm -hmm. and you create some some stories that are you know you, you just life-changing mm -hmm. and so you know for those that are in that situation i would say don't give up. Mm. Don't stop praying. Um, you know, praying parents are an amazing thing. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sandra, I just want to say, like, th there's a lot of people who look up to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me, me included. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, the many hats that you wear, you wear a lot of hats. Um, and you still manage to do everything with such grace. I'm going to say that. Um, yeah, really look like you're really an inspiration to a lot of us young people. Mm -hmm. um, and, y you know, the, the age gap's not that that different. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but you just need to reassure like you every time. <laughs> <laughs> but I make up for calling you old at the beginning. Um, but, yeah, no, like, even in the way, like, like I said, I have the privilege of, of being at the same school as your kids. Um, like, I can see 100%, the yeah. way that you're raising them is, is in a godly, such a godly way. And you mm -hmm. can tell in the interactions you have with all of them and... Um, yeah, I. It's all Shannon. All Shannon. What? <laughs> it's it's like ninety percent Shannon, ten percent. Yeah. I'll Shannon. take ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, funny story. I accidentally locked Sancho out of the bathroom once what? when we went to Walla Walla. <laughs> I like went to bed and I locked him in the. <laughs> I, locked the I locked him out of the bathroom. Oh, in the Airbnb, no. <laughs> but um, that oh, to no. say, even doing oh, that, no. like Sancho's <laughs> still a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah shoot. i think like as as young adults we're just so grateful to have um someone like you that we can look up to um and even hopefully when we when we have par when we have kids and when we're parents <laughs> we can be as cool as you as are cool as <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Ryan. but yeah we're so grateful that you uh, took some time to talk to us yeah um i feel like we could ramble uh, for so long but yeah and you said you were nervous i i'm Dude. just sitting here and i was like this is so chill right now yeah, don't he's, even he's like 25 can't tell my heart really? right now. <laughs> I'm so nervous. they can no. feel them through the no, <laughs> you did see no. my fingers see they're shaking <laughs> <laughs> no you guys are you guys uh, actually make it feel pretty pretty at ease here so thank you for thanks for being comfortable <laughs> you're welcome well, yeah thanks for sitting and yeah well like he said we probably could go on but we could cut this <laughs> Um, well, thanks, guys, for tuning in. And um, we like to end it here on don't forget to love God, love people, and serve the world. <laughs> <laughs>